guys all know, if you're any animal people, you'll know they're venomous because they can deliver a powerful venom to uh, subdue their prey. They're poisonous if I were to eat them. So if I ate like a toxic puffer fish. So we want to get that straight. Just because they're venomous does not mean they want to get you. Does not mean that they're ill-willed. So what I'm going to do, watch what I do here, okay? First thing is, these are really, okay, that's a bubble moving. These are really gentle animals. And if I don't appreciate this animal as a very um, tactile, so if I touch it, having an, an, an impact on the animal, I need to think how I present myself. If I stand real tall above this animal, I become um, a potential threat. I become a worry. And when you want to tell if a rattlesnake is worried about you when the tail starts buzzing, that's a lot of time that means, whoa, I'm kind of nervous. And that's what nature says. You have this rattle. They teach animals walking through the forest because this is a cryptic animal. This is an ambush hunter. They lay in wait sometimes for days, if not weeks, waiting for food to come along. And in case a deer walks along and steps on it, it would easily kill this animal by breaking its back or causing a significant, significant traumatic injury due to a hoof. So the snake has evolved with a rattle. But this is a thinking animal, all right? So this is not an animal that's reliant on instinct. Instinct can take over when the animal is challenged with worries. It has to make immediate, you know, split-second decisions. But once you let the animal think, it's a different animal. So if I laid, I could sit in a, 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 a bin with a whole bunch of these animals, and if I'm very passive in my behavior, these animals would freely crawl all over me, not trying to bite me because I have not broken their, uh, the trust of causing myself to appear as a threat. So check this out. When you touch an animal, that's an animal that's really worried, when I first make touch, see right there? It already is getting touched by the hook, okay? So what I wanna do, very gentle, and then I let them get used to it. So I'm gonna take this animal down a notch. I'm gonna stop the rattle. All right, so now I've, I've touched, touched this animal, but I'm, I'm reading body language. So this guy's a little bit worried now I'm going to let go. I'm going to readjust. So if I continue to hang on to the tail while this animal is trying to get away from what is obstructing its path from moving away, you're going to cause a worry. This animal is still being really, really good. I'm not worried about it shooting over here and trying to bite me. I'm always going to use my hook and I'm managing the first part of the body. This part of the body, that's, don't, that's where I don't touch with my hand. I'm always using the hook to manage distances. And I work with that, so right here. Donnie is, is now moving, so Donnie is now- I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I want potential to... worry. I'm trying to make it so I don't have to be on top of the snake here. Okay, here we go, guys. You ready? All right, Kevin, I'm sorry. Okay. There you go. You feel better now? Because I feel yeah. better. So right now, this snake is, is basically being challenged by all the infrared that's coming down to focus. So if you give this animal a chance, this animal's already assessed this hook. The hook keeps going near its face. See right here? That's not really doing anything. Because this animal's already assessed the hook. It already sees the hook. You know, uh, excellent eyesight. They're certainly aware of movement. And if I just do very passive things, just touching, that watch. So when I go to touch, right, this animal knows a very different feel. So nice and gentle, I touch and just make a bit of contact. And you're letting the animal get used to the contact. That's a huge, huge deal. So the way this animal is now behaving, this animal is responding to the camera. At this point, I could let this animal crawl over my foot or whatever, and I have no literal worries. 
uh, because the animal has no ill will. The animal is trying to get away from the horrible camera. Uh, but we're pretty much sensing that this, this animal is uh, where its mental state is right now. I'm watching tongue flicks. There's not a lot of panic. There's a little bit of worry of the camera, so the animal's coming over towards me. It's not rattling its tail. Now, this same understanding of these animals can be applicable to pretty much so many different animals. And it could be a chipmunk. It could be, you know, it doesn't have to just be reptiles, indicative of that. But you need to think of these animals differently. And then another thing. If you can get yourself in the habit when you're dealing with animals, especially in, we're not talking about cats and dogs. We're talking about non-domesticated animals, animals that we don't fully understand. I see them in modes. So critical. If you break everything down, it could be a hummingbird. It could be anything that has a brain that analyzes information coming in and then changes its behavior is capable of thought and it's capable of changing its behavior. So if I look at animals that think, I want to keep them in a thinking state where they're collecting information and they're changing their behaviors. Because what we wanna do is when we're interacting with animals, we wanna enter their lives or their environments and have a little interaction with them without challenging the animal and terrifying the animal. When that happens, you get to see the animal differently. So if you see an animal in a thinking mode, you're seeing the animal as it exists. If I'm seeing the animal in a fearful mode, we're becoming more instinctual. The animal is now defining its behavior due to instinct. And if it has any weaponry, defensive weaponry, it may include that in its behaviors. Now I have this rattlesnake right here. Everything is great. There is no no literal worries. I'm, there's no danger because I'm being passive and the animal's freely in a thinking state. If this animal was defensive and agitated, then I'm gonna have an animal that I cannot rely on and I will make sure I remove myself from a bite potential or whatever. And this comes down to your level of keeping. And this is one of the greatest places that our community can grow is actually understanding animal behavior, changing your behavior to get the best success. And we want these animals in thinking modes. So we have four modes, sleep mode, feed mode, where it's in its cage. Let's say we have a large snake, we enter its cage and it suddenly, it's been sleeping and it suddenly wakes up and it thinks you're food and it thinks you're a frozen rat and all of a sudden your boa bites you. Mistake, it was sleeping or it got overzealous and just mistook the movement as a food potential because these are very opportunistic animals and they still are very instinctual. So the animal grabs you, often it will let go and go, ooh, that's not right. So that's feed mode. Then we have fear mode. Fear mode where it is, uh, they, the brain really slows down and they start kind of relying on instinct. They, they rely on running away. They might rely on biting. They might rely on just acting crazy. All those things are defensive. Those, when you have an animal in a very defensive mode, that is not the time to uh, try to really work hard on that animal because as you constantly prod and poke that animal, you can actually create a negative thread. So if I can get this animal work, this animal's beautiful. This animal's in a thinking mode. This animal's curious. It's investigating stuff. I'm not really challenging it. Thinking mode, there's a camera going on and this animal is video recording just as it's being video recorded for us to learn this animal is now video recording all events that are occurring right now and if i don't do anything bad i'm going to cause a video where the snake is learning and it's learning to trust us and it will then change its behavior and as i keep doing these repeated threads of trust i'm building collectively a rope and that changes this animal's behavior. So I started out as a young animal, and as this animal continues to grow, there's always a rope being built. And if I do negative things, or if I let somebody enter the equation and then handle this animal incorrectly, hurt it, scare it, you'll actually take a lot of the thread that I've built 
and you're going to take away from the size of the rope. If I constantly misinterpret this animal's behavior and I engage in negative activity, I'm creating a, a rope of negativity and that animal is forever going to be terrified of you. Um, and I'm quite good at taking animals that are terrified or bad behavior animals and changing how they behave. So you might call it snake whispering, reptile whispering, and it's, I'm teaching you how to do it. And, um, you need to be detail, detail oriented. You need to be thoughtful. You, you need to slow down your movements. I'm an incredibly hyperactive person that can't stand to sit still and I'm always having to fiddle but I will change my behavior when I'm interacting with these animals. And I call it flowing. You make sure you don't do an incredible amount of erratic behavior, a lot of sudden um, non-planned movements. You're watching the way this animal is behaving. These are all very, very planned, thoughtful movements of an animal that is really, really passive. This animal is in great shape right now because of how I'm managing it. If I incorrectly anticipate things and I do bad things, I can take it out of this very sweet thinking mode and put it into a fear, you know, a fearful mode and the animal can then uh, revert to maybe in worst case scenario, actually using its fangs. Hey, we got to thank some people like a lot. Thank you guys so very cool, much. Cool. I'm sorry. I just wanted to rant, but I want to teach you guys stuff. The more and more I'm reading comments, the more I'm realizing <clears throat> how, it is actually making a difference. Is it making you happier making these videos? Yeah, it does. Okay. I, I, I really, because it means that things that are just myself, and I'm a pretty private person, that there's other people like Donnie that is now pulling these things out of, you know, of what I do. And as I'm doing that, it's causing people to respond. And then I'm seeing that it actually matters.